Good morning. I'm out here at Public Dock. I'm in uh, southeast Wisconsin at Paddock Lake. And I'm going to try a little casting out here to just see what's going on. I heard there was a nice bass caught out here the other day. Uh, we're going to try a couple of different rigs I have. And then I got a few good video clips I want to show you from Virginia of a fisherman. And we got some stuff coming up from uh, a little bit of archery and uh, early spring tom that was taken in Adam's Friendship in Wisconsin. So we'll begin with the show momentarily. I'm Beaver Mono. It's time for Out There Wild. Okay, I'm gonna just try casting over in here. I got a rig right now. It's it's actually for walleye, but uh, we're gonna try a few different things. I've got um, some uh, red worms and things like that. And they're not a walleye. No, it's not for you know panfish or crappie or anything like that. However, you never know sometimes what's gonna strike baits. I've seen some weird stuff happen. Uh, I'm gonna just try to see if we can't pull out something a little larger. Hopefully, I don't know about a walleye, but we'll give it a try. Let's give it a shot. Now, I don't know if you can see where I cast it out there, but uh, let's give that a try. Uh, it's a it's a crankbait, you know. You just keep cranking it in, and hopefully, with any luck, something will strike. A lot of bullfrogs around here. I could try a Rapala, a floating Rapala for bass, because bass are supposed to be pretty good around here. I should give that a shot. In about a minute, I will. probably do a lot of catch and release. Maybe if I get a couple of those, uh, when I fish with the red worms, if I get a couple of uh, crappie or gill, I'm going to bring a couple of them home. By myself today, I don't have a cameraman, so that's what you're seeing right now. I could back the camera up a bit, but I got some, got some right now, and it's big, and it's big. I got me a huge bass, I believe. I got something. I got me a bass. It's not huge. It's pretty good size. Pretty good size. Oh yeah. Want to see what I caught? Let me show you what I caught. A nice bass. Now that was on. That was on a Rapala, or not a Rapala. I apologize. This was on a. Uh, a lure for my, uh, for the walleye, for the walleye. So here we go, we got a nice bass. Not bad, not bad, I'm happy with it. Probably about a pound and a half, eh, might be two pounds. So, but I'm probably gonna put him back in the water. 
but I just wanted to show you what I got. I was really happy with this. Nice catch. Nice catch. All right. I'm going to here. Hold on. Hold on. These here are great for gripping. There are some fish gloves here. Let me show you what I got here. All right, he's freed up now. See that? It's a nice bass. Oh, he can kind of want to hold him. You know how guys always hold him close to the camera to <laughs> make him look bigger than he is. I'm going to say he's probably a pound and a half, two pounds. Nice fish. I'm going to just put him back in there. All right, buddy. You're going to be free, all right? You go back. And he's gone. A lot of times what you do is you, you put them in the water if you can reach it and pass the water back and forth through its gills. Give it oxygen back, you know, lose some of the oxygen, you put it back in there, pass the water back and forth through the gills, and then they take off. And it's best to try to hold the fish cradle, not, you know, the way I was holding it. <laughs> but as long as you don't hold that way too long. Create more, more in the cradle position than the up and down position. If, unless you, you know, they swallow it and you rip their insides out, you don't want to do that if you can help it. Wash your gloves off. And I'm happy with that for my first catch, so I think I'll try a couple more like that. We'll give another shot. And that was not even a floating Rapala. That was on a walleye jig. And remember what I said, you know, I've seen, you know, you don't know what's going to hit. Basically, you don't know what's going to strike. You want to remember, fish, all fish, larger fish, go out for smaller fish. And that's what this looks like to it. It's just got a nice swivel action in the water. This is like a little, like a little chad for, uh, or whatever you want to call it, a little silver minnow for a uh, walleye. And then when it goes through the water, it kind of, you know, does this number. So, pretty cool little thing. All right. All right, let's see if we can't get another bass on here, or whatever. Let's see what it strikes. Tell you what's gonna strike a lot of this stuff right here. <laughs> you know. All right, let's get that off of there. Now this is early morning. You know, it's uh, early July right now here, so perfect time. I see. You know, I could have kept that bass. They're off their spawning beds, but eh. If you notice, I'm trying to cast almost off the edge of that bedding up there. There's a big mass in there, nice ones, as you just saw.
Another thing, I don't have a steel leader on here, which I don't need for bass, but if a muskie was a plunge, not that it will on this, but if one did, hey, you know what? It could bite right through my line. Now, I do have steel leaders with me. They come prepared for that. I just came prepared to fish for smaller fish. I think I see a turtle surfing its head right there, and if you want to see that, oh, it was, and it just went under the water. I hope I don't catch a turtle. I've had that happen to me. If you get them in, take the hook out, you let them go. But you don't. Painted turtles in Wisconsin, harmless. Catch a snapper, well, you gotta be careful what you're doing. of nature. It's beautiful out here. Man, here in Wisconsin we have so many game fish. It's unbelievable. Uh, a beautiful state. I mean, we got wildlife. We got abundance of a lot of it. A lot of it. And, uh, Actually, if it weren't for fishing and hunting, at least here in Wisconsin, and a lot of other areas, uh, problems would exceed to be worse with wildlife because then you get too much of one species and not enough of the other over dominates, you know, uh, wolves with deer, you know, things like that. And it isn't just ant wildlife, there's other things that, that contribute to uh, animals that, that start disappearing off our planet. but. But here in Wisconsin, that don't seem to be an issue. We've had a really good year for 2016. It's been phenomenal. Phenomenal. They do a good job of taking care of the state. i got to give them a lot of credit. It's managed well. doing a very good job of getting over them pads and casting out the other way. I don't want to get right in them. You snag down, you'll be fighting them all day. No, I don't know if this is a good time to bring this up, but I'm going to just bring it up very quickly. Uh, I'm not even sure if, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about it. It's going through my mind, and the problems we're having that uh, globally, I mean, I know that hunters and fishers, some of them get a bad rap because a lot of them aren't bad people. But you do have situations where you got all this poaching going on and animals that are being extinct, not here in Wisconsin, but many other countries, things like that. And I, I, I talk to a lot of people uh, that live in bigger cities that I know being in the social media business and, and a lot of them are against some of this stuff but they if they could see what we had and maybe they could see how we manage it and control it they would see that we do a really good job that's why we got so many so much wildlife here and uh, and fish and it's because it's managed properly I mean it, you know, poaching, like, 
I'm just going to say, let's, let's think back to Africa and poaching there, you know, ivory and stuff like that. That's, that's done from governments. Foreign governments are supporting that garbage, and these people are going out there and they're getting paid big money to do it. Now, I don't call them guys hunters. I call them poachers. There's a difference between harvesting game and like I just did. We put the bass back. I could have kept it, you know, but the thing is there's uh, there's plenty of it here. I mean, I could have kept it, wouldn't have harmed it. We keep good tabs on this stuff, you know, and the money that sportsmen here in this state at least and uh, put into the land, land, put into this stuff goes into land regeneration, wildlife habitat, uh, it's managed well. It's managed well. And it keeps, does keep things from going extinct. That's the whole idea of it. It's just when you got the rotten crumb bums out there, that causes people problems. You know, I'm going to try to catch a, a couple of more here. But in the meantime, what I can do is uh, I want to show you a couple things from around Wisconsin. Uh, Brent out of Virginia has some stuff he wants to share with us. And we're going to take a look at that, a little bit of his uh, musky photos, and they're phenomenal. And uh, a buddy of mine from Adam's Friendship, uh, he's got a time to show us. So let's take a look at a little bit of that. Uh, we'll start back at, we'll head back for a few moments and uh, look at some of Brent's fishing photos and then. Uh, We'll go on and look at a couple of other things, and then uh, you'll join me back here for a few minutes. All right, let's get that started. mix it up a bit. Before we take a look at that nice time that Troy Lawson got in Adam's friendship in Wisconsin, let's take a look at some of this footage from Kenosha Bowman and then you join me back at the fishing dock. Very good. Awesome. Yeah, really good as well. <laughs> Targets you on this 
no mosquitoes. Oh, we broke. Just think of giant steaks. <laughs> yeah, I know. A little high, a little left. What do I got here? Mark for 50. You got it all the way to the top. Okay, you're gonna have to aim up above on my arrow. I know by your side. I got hers graduated in five yard increments. I don't have mine only graduated in ten. Because I don't usually use it. The adjustable range. I only have it so like when you shoot the novelties where you shoot 60, 70, 100 yards to pop a balloon or whatever. Yeah. Ten and eight. Yeah, they got a heart shot on. Got to be the same multiple. <laughs> <laughs> now the other day, uh, Saturday, Matt was out here and he dumped the turkey right behind him. Here. I don't know if it was a hen or, or a tom. I don't know that. I have no idea. But there's been some turkeys around here. Uh, some Jake, uh, oh, or really? Tom couple of hens so that's pretty cool yeah she got her first turkey in wisconsin this year all right congratulations to troy lawson of wisconsin for bagging this big tom in early spring during the early spring turkey hunt it weighed 27 pounds spurs measured at one five eighths inches it had a 12 inch beard congratulations troy nice turkey Want to see what I caught? Let me show you what I caught. A nice bass. Now that was on, that was on a Rapala, or not a Rapala, I apologize. This was on a, uh, a lure for my, uh, for the walleye, for the walleye. So here we go, we got a nice bass. Not bad, not bad, I'm happy with it. Probably about a pound and a half, it might be two pounds. So, but I'm probably gonna put him back in the water. But I just wanted to show you what I got. I was really happy with this. Nice catch, nice catch. All right, I'm satisfied with the bass I caught. Uh, I could do a lot more, I could do a lot more, but it's still pretty early yet. But uh, we're coming back out this evening. But, uh, you know, uh, we caught a bass. I was able to show you a few good nice catches from Brent. You know, I'm doing some selfies right now because uh, my cameraman couldn't get out here this early in the morning, but. I was able to make it, so I wanted to wanted to show you what we can do out here. Yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. All right, we'll be talking soon. Uh, look forward to showing you some more fishing video. All right, and until then, take good care of yourself. Try to remember our planet that belongs to all of us. Let's do our best to take care of it. I'm Dean Romano, and I hope you join us on the next Outdoor Wild.